This is a reading from the Diary of Jesus by Jean Olagnier. The apostles and the women who had been with Jesus met again in the Eucharist house, May 16th to 25th of A.D. 30, deeply impressed with what had just occurred. Acts chapter 1, verse 14a, all these with one mind gave themselves up to prayer. They waited for the coming of the Spirit promised by Jesus. They did not remain inactive, though. Within a few days of the Lord's ascension, Peter obeyed Jesus' command and replaced Judas. Now, again, there were twelve apostles. Acts 1, verse 15, At this time Peter stood up and spoke before all the brethren. A company of about a hundred and twenty were gathered there. Brethren, he said, there is a prophecy in Scripture that has to be fulfilled, that which the Holy Spirit made by the lips of David about Judas, who showed the way to the men who arrested Jesus. Judas was counted among our number and had been given a share in this ministry of ours, but he ruined his share. He let Satan enter him and turn him from being an apostle to betraying his Lord. As we know, Judas had been given money for a long time to spy on Jesus and tell the chief priests. Acts 1.18a With this, the price of his treachery he bought a field. Afterwards he fell from a height. His belly burst open and his bowels fell out. All Jerusalem heard of it, and the field came to be called, in their language, Hakeldama, that is, the field of blood. Well, in the book of Psalms the words are written, Let their camping place be deserted, and let no one be found to dwell in it. And again, let another take over his office. Now there are men who have walked in our company, all through the time when the Lord Jesus came and went among us, from the time when John used to baptize to the day when he, Jesus, was taken from us. One of these ought to be added to our number as a witness of his resurrection. So they named two of them, Joseph called Barsabbas, who had been given the name of Justice, and Matthias. Matthias was one of the shepherds and used to be one of John the Baptist's disciples. Acts 1 verse 24, And they offered this prayer, Lord, you know the hearts of all men. Show which of these two you have chosen to take his place in this work of apostleship, from which Judas has fallen away and gone to the place which belonged to him. They gave them lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he took rank with the eleven apostles. <clears throat> the disciples slowly dispersed and spoke about this for a long time. Meanwhile, the apostles took Matthias to Mary, the mother of God, welcomed the new apostle, and gave him the word of salvation. Everything was ready now for God's Spirit to come and give all the apostles the power they needed for their mission. May 26th, Sunday. Acts, Acts 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came round, they were all gathered together in the Eucharist room with the door shut. Mary was with them, reading out loud the scrolls of the law. St. Luke reported it was 9 a.m. Acts 2, verse 15. When she finished reading and the scroll no longer rustled, Acts 2, verse 2, All at once a sound came from heaven, like that of a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them the Holy Spirit in the form of a dazzling globe of fire. Mary had taken off her veil and opened her arms with a shout of joy and a smile of infinite love. The globe of fire stopped for a second. It hovered a few inches above his spouse's head. It was dazzling with that indescribable light that often marked God's interventions, the Annunciation, Jesus' birth, the Resurrection, and the Ascension. Then it split into what seemed to be tongues of fire. This is from Acts chapter 2, verse 3b. There were thirteen of them. The first one, which was much larger, lighted upon Mary. It looked like a flaming wreath crowning her virginal head. As for the other twelve tongues of fire, they, Acts 2, verse 3d, came to rest on each one of the apostles as a kiss on their foreheads. Then everything vanished. Mary remained in ecstasy, sweetly communing with God. The apostles, overcome with a supernatural impulse, hurried outside to proclaim the works and the word of God. They were intoxicated with that event, which will forever remain unique in the history of mankind. Things would happen from then on, as Luke tells us in the book of Acts, verse 34, sorry, footnote 34, Maria Valtorta describes very few of the events reported in the book of Acts. For the reader's convenience, from this point on until the end of the chronology, 
asterisks will be used to earmark paragraphs or sentences referring to events not described in Maria Valtorta's work, editor. First of all, and this is the first one with an asterisk, first of all, the apostles astounded a number of faithful Jews with their preaching. There was a mass conversion, and they were baptized and received the Spirit. End of May or beginning of June. The new church celebrated the Eucharist for the first time. Along with the apostles, there were Nicodemus, Lazarus, Joseph, Stephen, and the centurion Longinus, dressed in plain clothes. There were also many new disciples who had joined the Lord's flock since Pentecost. With Mary, there were, there were Mary Salome, Mary of Clopas, Mary uh, and Martha, and Mary of Bethany, Veronica, Eliza, and Johanna. Peter presided over the celebration under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He spoke about the Last Supper. He asked all of them to profess their faith in the species, true body and true blood of the Lord. He spoke about the passion undergone for the redemption of humanity and the forgiveness of their weaknesses and betrayals. At this, huge tears rolled down Peter's cheeks. He showed everyone the sacred relics stored in a chest. On the, on the one hand, there were the relics from the Last Supper, the cup of the first Eucharist, and the remains of the bread, broken by the Lord himself. On the other hand, there were the relics from his crucifixion, the crown of thorns, the nails and the sponge, and three sacred pieces of linen, the sheet in which Jesus had been brought down from the cross, which was soiled with blood and refuse. The veil Veronica handed to Jesus to wipe his face, which now bore the imprint of his face, and the veil Mary had managed to give to her son so he could wrap his loins. In the end, Peter performed the new Eucharistic rite. Communion was given under both species. Holy Mary was first to receive communion in both cases. June of A.D. 30. The new month began peacefully and quietly. The new Christians remained by themselves and avoided any demonstrations that might incense the chief priests. Thus they obeyed the Lord's recommendations to be peaceful, merciful, and charitable. All the pious women would eventually return to their homes, spreading God's word about them until some were called to spread the word afar. Meanwhile, the chief priests certainly did not experience peace in their hearts. They believed that they had destroyed the root of Christianity. But extraordinary events had been occurring for the past two months. They were becoming increasingly worried because the tree of Christianity was growing mightier. As a result, they began mistreating, mistreating some people and making several arrests. For instance, they arrested Peter and John. Asterisk. Meanwhile, many healings took place in the church, and many new members joined the body of Christ. End of asterisks. Some Christians began to worry about Mary's safety. Joseph and Lazarus ran the risk of being recognized in order to visit her at the Eucharistic house. They told Mary that it was too dangerous for her to live right in the city. They offered her another place to live. Joseph and Lazarus knew that she no longer wanted to live away from the places where her son had suffered. They suggested that she move in the house at the olive plantation. The house held many memories of Jesus, and it would be safer. By then, Lazarus and Joseph had finished the walls around the house of Gethsemane and the tomb. From then on, the Eucharistic house would be exclusively for liturgical worship. July. Rome openly chastised Pilate for yielding to the hostile crowd when Jesus was arrested and condemned. Footnote 35. After Pilate sent a report to Tiberius about the passion and resurrection, Tiberius wanted to proclaim Jesus a Roman god. See Tertullian, Apologies, uh, chapter 5, verse 2, and chapter 21, verse 24. Worse yet, Claudia openly left Pilate on the day following the resurrection. She did not want to give the impression that she condoned his cowardliness. She left with Plautina and Lydia, and Longinus escorted them to Caesarea. Criticized by Rome and deserted by his wife, Pilate began to hate the Jewish priesthood more than ever. For this reason, the chief priests had to restrain their anti-Christian hatred for a while. Mary and John took advantage of this new situation. On a clear summer morning, they began their first pilgrimage together. They crossed the Kidron River and went west, walking by the Ben Hinnom Valley in order to skirt the city. In this way, they came to Golgotha. After this, they went down to the sepulchre. Joseph had given Mary a key to the property. 
end of July. Joseph, Nicodemus, and Lazarus visited Mary when the moon was full. Footnote 36. The full moon fell on Tuesday, July 30th in our Gregorian calendar. They brought her the shroud in which Jesus had been hastily buried. This was the one Peter and John had found rolled up in the veil when they ran to the tomb. Shortly after this, Joseph had brought it over to Lazarus' residence so that it would be safe from Jesus' enemies. Now something strange had happened to the precious relic. As the days went by, Joseph and Lazarus could see the imprint of Jesus' body become increasingly clearer. It was exactly like Jesus' body after they had cleaned it inside the tomb. Footnote 37. This must be the Shroud of Turin, which, as we know, was scientifically analyzed in 1978 and 1981. They told Mary, too, that Peter had decided to change the day of the Lord from Saturday to Sunday, since Jesus rose on a Sunday. Peter had also decided to celebrate the Eucharist every Sunday from then on. It would be as solemn as possible and would take place in the Eucharist room now that it was exclusively consecrated to Christian worship. The first celebration was to take place on the following Sunday, August the 4th, most likely. Thus, the sacrament of the Eucharist was institutionalized. It had not been celebrated since that one, since that one time after Pentecost, August. Meanwhile, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Gamaliel, Israel's great doctor of the law, had been tremendously shaken by the sign. The temple walls were cracked, and the veil was rent when Jesus died. He was now in the habit of visiting Nicodemus in his house outside the walls of the city. He felt remorseful for not believing that Jesus was the Messiah while Jesus still lived in his mortal body. The great doctor did not dare address himself to the apostles, nor even the disciples. He approached Nicodemus, the wise Pharisee, who was a member of the Sanhedrin. Gamaliel knew that he was very close to Jesus and came to receive the light from him, and time went by. Asterisk. Pontius Pilate and Herod were beginning to forget what they considered a mere unfortunate incident. This was not the case for the high priest and his radicals. They grew more worried as each day went by. The new sect was gaining more followers and was organizing itself outside of the Jewish institutions. It kept the Sabbath less and instead celebrated its own rituals on the first day of the week. Closed asterisk. Acts 6, verse 7a. By now the word of God was gaining influence and the number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increasing. Even the priestly class was affected. Acts 6, verse 7b. Many of the priests gave their allegiance to the faith. Such a person of distinction as Gamaliel set a dangerous example. His own disciples had split into two enemy factions, as is free, qu frequent among youth. Stephen was the leader of the first group of converts. They followed the Hellenistic tendency, which was more open to the spirit than the letter of the law. In the second group, there was a prominent young man from Tarsus of Cilicia. He was 25 to 30 years old, a staunch Pharisee from the tribe of Benjamin. He was short, thick-set, bow-legged, and had a bulging nose. He was overly touchy and very ill-natured. He was an impulsive arguer, which made him a dangerous opponent. His name was Saul. A closed asterisk. As time went by, the second group became increasingly aggravated. Um, the young extremists were bitter as, at seeing their temple and their God continually jeered at by the followers of a false prophet. They put all their trust in the story which the guards had been bribed to spread, that Jesus' body would have been carried away by his apostles during the night between the Saturday and Sunday. However, this did not make any sense. All the apostles had fled when Jesus was captured. They were discouraged and disheartened by their idol's disastrous death. It would be extremely difficult to imagine them sneaking past the temple guards and loosening a massive stone heavily reinforced with cement. Late A.D. 30, little by little, the authorities began to relax their attention so that the high priest and his confederates were able once more to initiate a quarrel with the Christians. Okay, I'll read the next part, part three, the early church, uh, on the next time.